probably get started. Uh, people might still trickle in, but um, I don't want to take too much of your time today, so I thought maybe we'll get, get started. Um, first of all, my name is Monica Pierce. I'm the Director of Grants and Management at the Arts Council here. And a uh, bit of housekeeping, you probably already noticed there's some snacks and coffee and water and everything, so please help yourself throughout whenever, whenever you feel like it. If there's one thing I've learned about like grant writing, it's that coffee and like sugar are like very like best friends with, with grants. So that's like tip number one. If that's the only thing you remember from today, <laughs> that'll be good. Um, so I expect my the presentation part will be about 30 minutes, 30 to 35 minutes or so, and then we'll have some time to go into some questions. Um, I also put a sign-up sheet over there because there's a week where I'm kind of devoting some time just to meeting with people, but feel free to just contact me anytime. That's just so that, you know, if you're thinking like, okay, two weeks before the deadline, I might be like, you know, that might be a perfect time, then that's kind of why I have that, have that there. Um, so a little bit about me. I am originally from Prince Edward Island in Canada. And I moved here last May um, from Toronto to join my husband, who's going to LSU here. And so I'm really excited to be in this role at the Arts Council. Um, the granting systems in Canada are a bit different than here, but there's a lot of similarities. Um, definitely, the, there's also lots of other differences here, like the food is different, the weather is different, the accents are different. You can probably tell I'm like not from here. Um, but I'm really excited to be working with the Arts Council and getting to know the arts community here, which I can already tell is very vibrant and exciting. So, here we go. Uh, right. So, just generally, if you're new to the Arts Council, I, 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 that I, I just wanted to go through, we have three main regranting programs. I'm mainly going to be talking about one of them, but just to give you kind of like a broad strokes um, overview. Um, one grant we administer is the Decentralized Arts Funding Grant. Some of you may already access that. That's funding from the state of Louisiana uh, that we administer for arts programming throughout the 11 Parish region. Um, many of you, I think, received those uh, already. And if any of you do receive those, we just heard that we got the money from the state finally, so those checks are going out next week. So that is very, very, very good news. Um, the second grant that we administer is the Charles Lamar Family Foundation uh, Shaw Center subsidy grant. So that's to help organizations rent the Shaw Center spaces, the Manship Theater and, and like spaces. Um, so basically it's a subsidy to help cover uh, venue costs uh, for that. And then the third one is the one that I'm going to be talking about today, which is the Local Project Assistance Grant which is funded by the East Baton Rouge uh, Parish Mayor, Mayor, President, and Metro Council. So this one is EBR uh, specific. So I'll be talking today about the Local Project Assistance Grant, and there's a, a few changes this year, um, so I'll be kind of going into some of those. So the purpose of today's workshop, I'm going to go into the details of the Project Assistance Grant, um, I'm going to go into sort of an overview of the Community and Diversity Fund, which is sort of the new component this year. Um, then I'll do a quick walkthrough of the online application, which is pretty streamlined, so I don't think it'll, uh, I think you'll have not a lot of trouble kind of going through it, but just to kind of give an overview. And then I'll go into some grant writing tips, and then we'll have some time for questions at the end um, if you want to ask any specifics or broad strokes questions about uh, the PAG grants. Okay. So the PAG and multicultural uh, grant programs um, are being revised this year. They haven't been revised in 20 years. So when I came on board and I, I talked with, with Renee Chatelaine, we went through to take a look at kind of best practices and what's possible and most effective for us to administer um, in terms of kind of using this pot of money that we have for the project assistance grant to get it out into the community for the kind of maximum impact. So what we decided to do was to create this community diversity fund uh, component of the PAG grant. Um, another 
uh, change this year is that the minimum ask has been raised to 1,000. Um, that's not a very big change. I think the minimum ask last year was 500. But the maximum ask is raised to 10,000, which is quite a big jump. Um, I believe last year the maximum ask might have been five or 6,000. So that's, that's a bit of a difference. Um, I don't think there'll be too, too many grants that will come in at 10,000, but we did want to, because the pot of money is very similar, but we did want to give an opportunity for people to kind of dream a little bit bigger and for us to be able to raise the stakes to see kind of what's, what's out there and what's possible uh, with that amount of money. So the goals of the program to enhance the creative capacity of Baton Rouge, to develop larger and more diverse audiences, to increase opportunities for local artists um, and to provide access, to close gaps in access to the arts, especially for people with otherwise limited opportunities, and to encourage new initiatives and enhance existing programming. So I think there are many, many creative ways to be a part of those goals and to look at how that fits for your organization. Um, no matter what kind of discipline you might be in or, or your approach, I think these are broad enough that, that you can find a way that they can fit with, with your organization, see what the overlap is. Okay, so the important kind of info and dates for this grant. Uh, the first one is Grant Workshop, which is today. Congratulations, you made it. Check. So that one is good. The online application is now open. It just opened as of like 15 minutes ago, so that's also done. That's a check for me. Uh, the deadline for this grant is April 15th at 5 p.m. Um, so the portal will literally close at 5 p.m., so do make sure you uh, make, that, make that deadline. Um, I was sort of thinking about this, and uh, to be fair, the Canadian tax deadline is not April 15th, so I did, was not aware that that was like such a big deadline day, but then I was thinking, you know, like deadlines are never like, they always come up at inopportune times, and like think how good you're going to feel on April 16th, you're just going to be like, boom, I'm done, so that'll be good. So after that, the grant review panel will meet in probably early May, so you should find out your results. My guess is three weeks to a month or so after you submit. The activity period, this is important, your project must fall between May 1st, 2019 and April 30th um, of 2020. Those activity deadlines are different than last year because of the deadlines being different, so just wanted to highlight that. There's one submission per organization. And one note, especially for people who are applying for the first time, the way that the payment of funds works with this type of grant, it, or with this particular grant, is that when it's awarded, uh, upon getting the results, then you send in your contract, and then you would get 60% of the grant amount. The other remaining 40% is distributed once we receive your final report. So that's kind of a reimbursed part of the grant. So, so who can apply for PEG? So this hasn't changed over last year. It's all the, all the same. It's a nonprofit organization um, or corporation, association, institution that has 501c3 status. The applicant must be in Baton Rouge and the project must be in uh, Baton Rouge. If you are, uh, it doesn't have to be an arts organization that applies, but it does have to be a nonprofit, and it does need to be arts programming. So if there's a nonprofit that wants to do arts programming, but they're not, that's not what their main mission is, then they can still do that. They just need to kind of make a strong case, case for it. You can also use a fiscal agent to apply if you don't have 501c3 status. So that would be an example of, say, maybe, um, like a collective or, or something like, or a new gallery or just an organization that doesn't have 501c3 status yet, they partner up with an organization that does, then that organization uh, is the applicant and they receive the funds, but then the, you know, the collective or the gallery actually does the programming. So there are a few kind of rules around that, um, but um, if that applies to you in any way, then we can talk, talk after. 
Um, and, and also important that if you receive other funding from the Arts Council, say you have a DAF grant or if you have um, a Lamar grant, it doesn't affect eligibility here, so you can still apply, you can apply for PAG. Uh, okay, so now we're gonna go a little bit into eligible expenses and ineligible. So the main thing is that the grant funds direct costs related to arts programming. So if it's a project cost, it's pretty much most likely gonna be eligible. But we'll go into a few examples. The whole kind of like list of, um, list of eligible and ineligible is all in the guidelines, but just to give you a little overview. So examples of eligible expenses would be artist fees. Artist fees are great. We love artist fees, love artists to be paid. That is a great one. Production costs, so things having to do with say your venue, your technical costs, lighting, sound, all that kind of stuff. Supplies, you know, your paints, your canvases, scores, whatever supplies means within your discipline would be eligible. Um, equipment rental, but not equipment purchase, so that's kind of like a, a little distinction there. But, you know, say if you're renting subs for or speakers for something, that would be eligible. And just basically any direct costs that relate to your project, um, making it sort of possible. The ones that are ineligible, I mean, I think are, uh, are, are fair, fairly clear. Um, capital improvements, so, you know, if, you're, if your venue has a leak in the roof, unfortunately you cannot use PAG, PAG funding to pay for that. Uh, deficit reduction, um, you know, admin costs that are not related to the project, so like overall sort of operating, co operating costs, there's not much that can really go into PAG for that. And fundraising events or expenses, that one can be a little tricky because, you know, many events that people put on have some kind of like a fundraising component, but um, if that is the main purpose of the project, that's kind of where it gets into um, tricky territory. Um, but if you're, if you're not sure about that, you can obviously ask me and I can, I can help with that. Okay. So the criteria for evaluation is very similar to last year as well. The terminology is slightly different, but it's basically the same, uh, same thing. So there's artistic merit at 40%, so that's the highest weighting of, of the three. The impact of the project at 30%, and then the organizational and financial viability. So the artistic merit is, the panel will be asking questions like, does this project fit with the goals of PAG? Is their project description clear? Is it compelling? You know, does your artistic support material, whatever that is for your discipline, whether it's slides or video or audio, does it support the strength of their work? As in, does it make, does it make them feel like, you know, that, uh, that the work is strong? Who is involved artistically in this project? Who are those sort of key contributors? And will this project contribute to the art form or discipline? I mean, that's a little bit kind of a zoomed out question, but it's something that, that's good to think about as well. Do take time, I mean, I'll go into this in a minute, but take, take some time when you're putting together your application to think about what you might want to submit for your artistic support material, because your panel is going to be looking at that and assessing, so this is going to be a very convincing factor for a panel. Uh, I know that there's there's a case where the panel might know your organization so they might be coming in with some knowledge but that's a really good point to show them kind of where you're at and and really just show them your best work. So the impact here, the panel will be looking at whether the application shows kind of thought and consideration for how this project fits into the community and the strategies that you have for getting the word out kind of to that community. Um, so impact can be both external in terms of, you know, is this impacting, you know, your community, the audience, everything, but it can also be internal in terms of how is this impacting your organization? How is this impacting the artists that are involved? So it can be, you can look at it from kind of multiple 
dimensions. And I also encourage you to think about impact in terms of qualitative and quantitative. And by that, I mean, with some projects, the amount of people that you attract for that is really where you want to highlight it. You know, like the project is so vast and it's impacting so many people that that's what you want to highlight. But in other cases, it's really about the impact on the individual or the depth of the experience that that person might have. So for instance, you know, if your project is working with detained youth or something like that, it may not be as much of a numbers game, but the impact is still very, uh, still very real and good to talk about. Um, so yeah, I do I encourage you to think of it in, in kind of in multiple perspectives. So the organizational and financial viability, this is mainly where we'll be looking at the organization's history of programming, the timeline for the project, um, the budget for the project, and just the overall fiscal health of the organization. So one change that we did make this year is that we no longer require financial statements. Um, so what I kind of condensed that down so that you know there's just a line for um, you know your last year's organizational budget like total and then also if you have an accumulated surplus or deficit that would go in there but there's no um, there's no you don't need to submit your your audit uh, for, for this grant anymore so I'm, I'm hopeful that that will be helpful and a little less work but but we'll we'll see so Anyway, this is basically asking whether the organization is organized and is in good shape enough to pull off this project in the way that they are, they're suggesting. Okay, so the Community and Diversity Fund. This is new this year. So this is designed to provide support for high impact engagement, including but not limited to engagement activities or initiatives with populations whose opportunities to experience the arts are limited by geography, ethnicity, economics, or disability. So the first thing to note is this is an option. Oh, oops, hold on. Um, first thing to note is that this is an optional com component. It's not something that you need to apply for, um, but I encourage you to if you, if you would like to. Um, if you do want to apply for it, it is within the PAG grant. So it's basically an expansion of your project. Um, it's designed as an expansion to your project to try and create more impact in the community. And it is a set amount of 2000. So this is a bit of a, um, um, this is a bit of a new, what was I gonna say? It's hard to know in advance what will be funded for this because it's still sort of developing as we go. Um, but it will likely only be a handful that will be funded of this, this component. Um, so what I thought I would provide um, is I thought I'd give some kind of, I actually did, have, I had some fun with this. So I created some, some fake organizations with some fake projects in Baton Rouge. So here we go. I hope you, I hope you enjoy this. Okay, so the first example that I have is Baton Rouge Salon Concerts. So this is a chamber series that is requesting PAG funds for their two-day run of their concert celebrating the centenary of the women's right to vote. Great. Their community and diversity fund component requests funds to go into three nursing homes in their area to do private concerts for residents. So that's an example of an organization, they have their PAG project, and then the community and diversity fund kind of grows out to that and becomes more specific. So the second one that I have is uh, Capital City Hip Hop Academy. So this is a hip hop academy that provides after school mentorship on recording, production, and beat making. And they are proposing their annual showcase, Back to Base. Um, their community and diversity fund component requests funds to provide ASL interpretation for the MCs for an additional concert that they're going to do at Louisiana School for the Deaf. So again, this is an example where it's a very specific project and then the Community and Diversity Fund comes out and sort of becomes more specific to, to what they're sort of targeting outreach-wise. And the third one uh, was Off Off South Broadway Productions. 
Um, yeah, I really enjoyed that. Thank you. Um, so a theater company is mounting a production of Tennessee Williams' The Glass Menagerie in partnership with a new gallery that has a glass art show. Their community and diversity fund component is to have professional actors work with the Mental Health Association on a reading with their residents. So they have their main project and then their component is to go and work uh, with the material from that with the Mental Health uh, Association. Uh, okay, so a couple of uh, things that are very specific to this um, are that um, the Community and Diversity Fund, it's a set amount of 2000 I would say do not include it in your project budget. If it is awarded for your organization, we may ask you for a revised budget, but just don't include it in that because we're going to sort of look at it. We're going to try and look at it a little bit separately, so trying to keep it separate as, as much as possible. Similar to that, um, try not to go into it too much in your main project narrative. We will have a special space for you to talk about it. Um, so to try and keep it contained in the narrative of that component. I'll show you when we go through the online application that you'll see that it's pretty clear, but that's just a little reminder. Okay, so the online application, I'll go into this. It's, I think it's very, very um, streamlined in my opinion, so I think it should be fairly simple, but it is different than last year, so I do want to go through. So basically you go to artsbr.awardsplatform.com. It's also on our website in the PAG um, section, like there's a link to it. You register as a new user, and then so there'll be a call in there for you to register. You'll get an email, as you do with when you register for something, and then you'll be able to log in. Okay, when you log in, you should be able to see the 2019 guidelines. There'll be a little drop down there so you can kind of review everything if you like. And at the bottom of that page, there'll be a button that says start application. Okay, so then it'll bring you to the main kind of uh, application where there's a bunch of tabs for each section. And so the first thing that you'll go through is just putting your application information. You know, this is the sort of data type stuff like name, address, um, phone number, etc. And at the bottom of every page, you'll have a chance you can save and keep going, or you can save and close. And this is a really nice feature because, I mean, a lot of grant applications have this now, but it is very nice that you can work on it, save it, come back to it, and you should be fine. So um, I, I definitely appreciate that when I apply for grants. And when you, at the very end of the application when you go to submit, if there's anything that is missing, it will tell you. So that is also a nice feature, but it also can be, um, if you're waiting until the last minute, it might be a little stressful. <laughs> so, I mean, it'll just say like, you know, you forgot to put in your name, you know, and then you have to go and fix that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, you should be able to work on it, come back um, as you go. Okay. So your project description, this will be where you put sort of the main meat of your, of your application about what the project is, what your goals are, the timeline, and it's a combination of short and long uh, questions. Um, I'd say like this, this is the part where uh, you really want to show, I mean my music, my music theory teacher said to me once about this assignment that um, it doesn't need to be perfect, but it just needs to show evidence of brain activity. So, just like, you know, just like show us that you have thought about what you're, what you're doing. Okay, uh, so yeah, that's what that tab will look like. So at the end, you'll put save and next if you want to keep going, or save and close and come back to it. Okay, so the budget summary is where all your financial info will go. So that'll be your request. Um, your um, projected budget, or your total project budget, I mean. Um, and so basically how it will work, hold on, I'll show you. So right at the top, there'll be a project assistance grant budget template. So you can download that, work on it, and then you can upload it in this same page. 
So it is one, it's the one example where you have to kind of like take something out and work on it. And it is the same as last year. So the budget is exactly the same. Um, so only other things on the budget summary side, and if you have questions about this, we can talk about it in the question kind of period too. But um, it does need to be balanced. So, you know, your revenues need to match your expenses. So if your project is, you know, a $5,000 project, you know, then it needs to have 5,000 of revenue and 5,000 of expenses. It does need to be balanced. And there does need to be a 50% cash match, which means if you're asking for, say if you're asking for $3,000 for a, a of grant funds, then you need to have 1500 so you need to have half in a combination of either money on hand, so say if you have like, okay, we're going to have, we have 1500 ready to go from a donor or whatever, or on ticket sales. Um, or it can be a combination of um, some amount that is actual cash and then some amount that is in kind, but it does need to uh, match that sort of 50% of what you're asking for. So if that's confusing, we can kind of go into that a little bit later. I know some people have a little bit of trouble with that and it can be a little unclear. So if you're ever not sure, then we can just kind of talk about it. Okay, and then the next tab is the project contributors. So this is where you'd put in your project director, you know, any, any key people that are in your, in your project. And you can, there's a space for a brief bio uh, for their role in the project and then their professional fee. So it looks a little something like this, right? So you'd put, like, there's one that will already be there, but then there'll be a button that says, like, add a contributor. So if you want to add more, then you can. Okay. So the Community and Diversity Fund, this is its own separate tab. And it's just a narrative. So this is where you, where you would just write out, like, this is what we want to do, and this is how much it costs, that kind of thing. So it all goes in this area right here. And like I said, it's optional. You don't have to. But if you would like to, great. OK. And then the last tab is the support material and attachments. So this is where you would put your um, artistic support material. So if you're in music, then it might be audio or, or video. If it's visual art, it might be you know slides or, or images or whatever. So you can you should submit at least one, but up to three items. These things can be either they can be you know documents or or PDF or JPEG or whatever, or they can be links to. Uh, like, for instance, if it's a video, it, we would probably prefer if it was a link so that it's not too much to download for our panelists. And then this tab is also where you would put the required attachments, which would be, you know, your nonprofit status, your board of directors, any letters of support that, uh, or letters of support that have to do with if you're doing this in partnership with, with anyone, then we would need to have a letter of support from them. And if you have any, if you, there's a spot for optional attachments too, so that would be your brochures, press release, or sorry, press coverage, etc. cetera. Um, those are optional. Just, I mean, I would say only add those if, the, if you think they're gonna strengthen your project. You know, we already know that you're an organization, but if you think it's, it will it'll, uh, give more strength uh, to the project, that's where I put that. Okay, so it looks a little bit like this. There'll be a little kind of item there, and then you can select a file and just like, um, and there'll be there'll be one there where it says you know upload a link, so you just paste it in. It should be fairly clear, I hope. And then when you're ready, submit, and then you're Woo, I'm done. Okay, so I'm I'm just about done here. I'm just gonna go through a couple of grant tips, and then we'll go into um, some questions while this is still kind of fresh fresh in your mind. Okay, here we go. So first tip, these are borrowed uh, from the Toronto Arts Council. Um, so the first one is, first tip, contact your program manager, especially if you're a first time applicant. So if you're not sure, like this is why there are people like me or whoever 
to kind of like answer questions about stuff. So if you're really not sure about something, just give me a call, send me an email. I'll try and get back as soon as I can. So number two, give yourself adequate time. Uh, in my opinion, successful grant writing is not done at the last minute. You can do it, but please try and give yourself the gift of time to be able to uh, spend time thinking about it and just, you know, uh, giving it some deep consideration. The third tip is read the guidelines. There's a lot of information in there, uh, but it'll definitely help you determine if your project is a good fit. Uh, so take some time to think about your artistic vision and goals. You know, when you think about it, the panel's gonna be thinking about that, about your project, so as long as you've thought about it, then there should be a good, good connection there. Five, write clearly and directly. And six, outline your action plan, so how you're going to do this project. That would be in this sort of timeline part. Create a real realistic budget. Your community is going to be the one who's assessing your grants. So, sorry, it was uh, outline your action plan. So clearly outline the steps that will be taken to ensure the sex, uh, successful completion of your project. So create a realistic budget. So like I was going to say, your community, the, the panel that's looking at it is going to be made up of people like you. So they're likely going to know what the real costs are of, of the different things. Um, so just try and make it as realistic and down to earth of, of how things actually work as possible. Get feedback. This is a big one. It's always great to have another person to read it. Um, this is good for catching typos, but also sometimes when you're really close to a project, you don't realize that there are things that you're leaving out and to, that make it unclear. So that's a good one to get feedback. Gather your support materials. Sometimes with your artistic support material, you may need to get it from somebody. You may need to get it from the video person. You might need to get it from the photographer. So take some time to think about when you need to do that. And then finally, follow the instructions and just triple check your grant and make sure you check uh, the deadline time as well. And I think those are my main tips. And here we go. So that's it from my, my part, but I'm also here today for people, for questions to come up and I really encourage you